This may look like one of the thousands of motorhomes that travel New Zealand's tourist routes, but as the branding indicates, it is something very different. With the assistance of the Energy Efficiency and Conservation Authority's Low Emission Vehicles Contestable Fund, Tourism Holdings Limited has developed the vehicle and planned routes for it to travel. It is based on the all-electric LDV EV80 chassis. Ed Burak leads THL's EV program and explained the vehicle had to balance both the need to be electric and be a proper functioning motorhome. Uh, so, so basically uh, the form factor of this is we most first and foremost for us it's important that it's uh, uh, a motorhome first and the fact that it's an EV is uh, somewhat secondary in terms of how it functions uh, from a camper van point of view and so we've um, I looked at things such as the length and we've reduced it so that it's uh, easy to store, you have advantages of travelling on the ferry and parking and so you know all those bits and pieces that's a real advantage for us um, uh, but also the function of it inside um, has to function as a you know comfortable motorhome. Right so what we've done differently on the interior is uh, from a styling point of view we've gone a little bit more contemporary it's almost sort of like a sort of apartment living or sort of um, um, in terms of the finishes and there's lacquer handles and it's just got a really nice light airy feel. It's a two berth uh, motorhome fully self-contained with a shower and, and toilet um, and I guess in terms of some of the things which uh, are different because of this sort of EV approach is that we've eliminated all uh, uh, fossil fuel, so there's no LPG gas for cooking for example. So we've replaced that with uh, induction um, cooktop which is nice and smooth, it looks beautiful uh, and um, and it simplifies the whole vehicle. Uh, um, and of course lighting, all LED lighting throughout the whole vehicle. Uh, and uh, outside of that we are, we're, just, we're starting to experiment with different materials to just try and improve the sort of the fit and finish and the, and the presentation and reduce weight as well. Burek explains there is more to the project than just developing the vehicle. So we have decided some time ago, in fact, that we need to just begin to understand what EV means, you know, to us and to ultimately to our customers. Because we're an experienced business, even though we've got the largest fleet of camper vans in the world, um, uh, 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 and they're an asset that we need to manage, we also um, uh, are fundamentally an experienced company whereas you know, perhaps 10 years ago we considered ourselves a camper van company. And so what that means is that we're interested in the um, overall experience and what, uh, and what the expectations of our customers are in terms of why they're coming to New Zealand or Australia or the US um, and what they're trying to achieve. Yeah? And, um, and so, uh, <clears throat> so it's important for us to get on board of understanding what it takes to operate, run a EV, um, uh, RV uh, and uh, how that differs from EV ownership as well because there's a different sort of, sort of center, set of I guess the expectations and needs if you're visiting a country um, and you, you're fundamentally the choice for a camper van is to have freedom and flexibility to explore the places and stay longer at one place and go wherever you like as opposed to being in a hotel room so it's a unique sort of set of experiences that, and expectation from operating a camper van so how does that fold into operating a um, um, an EV um, vehicle? Uh, and so the only one way to really find out, that's by experiencing it ourselves. He agrees there's the potential for tourists to be attracted to New Zealand simply to try out an electric motorhome. Oh, perhaps it will be. We're not sure really. I mean, because we know that there's different motivations for EV. You know, some, you know, the three main ones being, you know, um, uh, from purely a sustainability point of view, people are, you know, are aware and concerned about the emissions, so um, that's why they're driving a, or want to drive an EV. Um, the second being uh, frugality, you know, you know, the fact is that it's, it's a cheaper way to get around, and, then, um, and especially in today's day and age, it's getting more and more expensive in an ICE vehicle. Uh, and the third one being, you know, those who are interested in uh, um, uh, just being sort of uh, the leader of a pack, you know, like the technology, um, want to be into in something cool and fundamentally it's a cool technology so they are the th are three main drivers at least for EV ownership that, that we've come to understand uh, uh, and um, and then you think about just tourism in general and the impact that has on the environment and um, sort of it's a really nice fit. The LDV prototype is just one of a range of EV projects THL is undertaking. We're running several uh, EV projects 
not all of it, so I can talk to you about at this stage. Um, but uh, we you know we've started off small, with, as I said before, with a small Nissan um, um, GMV 300, and that was just really purely for us as um, THL and Brits and Maui, just getting used to driving an EV and understanding. Uh, the anxieties which occur when you first get into one, you know, the typical things, and um, and understanding uh, what it takes to operate one of those vehicles. So we just converted that to a little camper van, a little sleeper camper, and we started doing um, some routes and um, talking to customers on the road to start gauging the interest. And, it, you know, every stop, um, you'd have a half hour conversation with people around, um, you know, is this a camper van and it's electric? And all, and, and all the usual questions come up. And all those questions are really pertinent to us because they, they point to where potential anxieties or things that we need to sort of deal with um, if we're to offer this up to a customer ultimately. Uh, and so that was our first step. And then we've um, been trialing um, a couple other vehicles and we've converted um, now um, uh, and built ground up a, um, a motorhome. Again, that's a promotional slash conceptual vehicle for us to gauge interest and learn from. Um, so that's, so that's the vehicle development, and then around that, we've um, we've realised that the restriction is exactly your 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 touring around the country is determined by your charging um, capability and infrastructure, and so we've had to meld together what's currently there with the things that we see our customers enjoying most. You know, we we um, we're, we're experienced in the tourism industry, so we know where the the, you know, the, the highest level of satisfaction comes from when you're touring um, New Zealand. And so can we meld that with the current infrastructure? And then the, I guess the third thing is what can we do to fill in the gaps? And so we're, um, uh, we've are we designed itineraries and we've partnered with a couple of people to start putting in our own infrastructure to support the existing infrastructure. So we're talking about so almost like two different levels of um, charging, so AC versus DC, so fast AC charging is what we're investigating at the moment. And we've partnered with Holiday Parks New Zealand and we're going to be putting in fast AC charging up to 22 kilowatt um, at all the parks which form part of our, our uh, EV loops, so to speak. Um, and that's just a complementary charging facility. Um, and of course, they'll use existing DC charging and AC charging where it's available as well. With early testing indicating an average range of around 140 kilometres, initial EV routes will essentially slow tourist progress, but for positive reasons. The real the ongoing theme here is around us having an integrated end-to-end -end, um, ability to tour New Zealand in an EV, uh, and we've developed itineraries which we believe uh, uh, slow the customer down a little bit and get them to enjoy each destination far better. And when so and so, what we're doing is we're also offering up things such as great food and wine experiences that they perhaps wouldn't be aware of if a, a classic tourist, you know, and. You know, it's a real frustration to me that people will tour New Zealand and come finish it and go, it was beautiful, but um, you got terrible food, for example, because they because they stopped at um, the average trucky bakery on State Highway One without knowing this amazing craft beer or bakery or cafe around the corner, which which has outstanding food and wine experiences. And so we're actually we're using that as an opportunity to um, um, offer up uh, more depth in their in their travels as well. You know, so that's almost like can we. Can we identify what the potential constraints are and in order to balance that out, offer up where you should go, give you really good guidance. So we have obviously um, GPS enabled vehicles with um, with uh, screens which guide you to everywhere. They will be pre-programmed in so when you're taking your vehicle around, you know exactly where to go. Um, and it's all in the cadence of um, topping up um, uh, your battery in the most appropriate areas and where you can have a coffee while you're waiting. Um, uh, obviously, with our partnership with Holiday Parks New Zealand, they're going to have EV specific sites um, where they can plug in for the house at the back to charge the microwave and, the, and their phones and bits and pieces and plug in the vehicle in the front to recharge your vehicle battery. Burex says the ECA funding has been essential. It's incredibly crucial and really you know, the amount of foresight and that, you know, the, the availability of that funding is fantastic. and, and Incredibly useful, you know. It just it, what it does is it makes things happen faster. The LDV-based motorhomes will be available to rent in the next summer season, though initially volumes will be small. Uh, it's quite a con control set, so about ten vehicles, probably five in the North Island, five in the South Island initially, um, 
uh, going up to maybe perhaps 20 as we as we continue to roll out, but initially targeting 10 vehicles. There is unlikely to be much of a premium for their hire. Well, I don't, I don't see there being any premium apart from the experience. They have a premium experience, but you know these things need to stack up. Obviously, the whole sustainability component of this is also around economical sustainability, and, and from the business point of view, this all has to stack up. Uh, we're confident that it will, um, but at the same time, I don't expect that we should be charging customers extra to be using one of these vehicles. In fact, and, and as, as the overall cost of um, renting and operating one of these vehicles, in fact, it should be significantly cheaper because your operating costs um, you know, are significant. <laughs>